Dwayne from Orlando. Orlando. Dwayne from Orlando, Florida. Hey, Dwayne, Orlando, Florida. I see TJ from Charlotte. Who else do we have on the line? Hey, Camille, yeah. Tracy in Atlanta. Hey, Tracy, good morning. Who else is out there? Jalen Hicks from Orlando. Hey, Jalen, good morning. Who else is out there? Atlanta. I heard Atlanta. <laughs> Who else is on? Priscilla from Indiana. Hey, Priscilla. This is Effie from Atlanta. Hey, Effie from Atlanta. China from Atlanta. Hi, China from Atlanta. Who else is out there? Lorraine from Atlanta. Atlanta representing. Who else we got? Latoya from Atlanta. <laughs> Atlanta. Hey, Latoya. Jackie from Atlanta. Hey, Jackie. Hey, Jackie. Who else? All right, I Dominique see from Orlando. Orlando, okay. Who else we got? Y'all giving me so much life this morning, like for real, for real. I oh, see Dayton, Atlanta, Seattle, Miami. Hi, this is Siluendo from Zambia. Yes, Siluendo Zambia. from Zambia. Hey, good morning. All right, let's see who else we got out here. I see Hi. you. Got Jamie here, Saudi Arabia. Let's get it. Saudi Arabia, let's get it. Who else we got? I am Onalena from Botswana. Oh, Botswana on the line. Good e good morning. I see um Tony Hightower. I just saw you jump on here. Um Kalia from Atlanta. Let's see. Grace from Dallas, Chicago, Sydney, Australia. All right, I'm loving it, you guys. So um who else we got? One more a few more seconds. Tradina from Detroit. Hey, Tradina, excited to meet you in two weeks. I think we're going to yes. be in Detroit. Yes. So I'm super, super excited. So let me go ahead and mute the lines out really, really quickly so we can jump in here. Um, I'm not going to keep you guys too long, but I definitely want to be as efficient and effective as possible because the scanner is like a game changer, you guys. And um, as some of you have heard, there are people who've been seeing massive, massive success from starting on the foundational things with the scanner and my scanner training. And so um, I've evolved a little bit, connected with some of those people, got some extra pointers and different things like that. So I want to be able to share all of that with you all. So make sure you have a pen and paper ready to actually take notes um, on the call. Okay, I got the lines muted. So make sure you take notes on the call. Um, just a couple of announcements. We still have some uh, tickets available for Detroit. If you have not gotten your ticket for Detroit, definitely encourage you to go ahead and get that. Also for the um, IML SOARS event that's going to be in Fort Lauderdale slash Miami in September, today is the last day for the early bird tickets, which are $97. So you want to go out there and go ahead and get your ticket um, for that. Um, Leadership call tomorrow will be at the new time, which is 12 Central, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So mark your calendar for that. Um, so let's open up with prayer really quick. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this day and time. We thank you for every person under the sound of my voice. We thank you for increasing their bank accounts. Even now, we thank you for the strategies that will be shown through today's training that they come with clarity and they come easy and make it easier for them to continue to move forward and progress and even affect the masses as they share this information with their teams. We thank you for the IML leadership. We thank you for our chairman leaders. Um, just increase it every person, even now in Jesus' name. We love you and we thank you. Amen. All right, you guys. So let's go ahead and jump in here really, really quick. So let me pull up my screen. And we, this has a capacity of 300 people. So we can still get some more people on here. It's recording, Sean. I see you. Um, we can still get up to 300 people. So I need y'all texting this out, like telling your people to get on here. You know, I, at this point, I'm not even opposed to you putting prospects on here. They can see how easy this is. They can't access the scanner without being an IML. But here's an opportunity for them to go ahead and see how it really works. So... Get that thing out here. Let's max this call out. All right, you guys. So let me go ahead and share my screen really quick so we can jump in here. I'm going to just share my desktop. All right, perfect. Oops, cancel. Hold on. I don't want to cancel no meetings. All right, here we go. So if you can see my screen, please confirm that you can see it for me so I can um, make sure we're good to go. You just, let's see, chats. 
All righty. Perfect. All right, excellent. All right, let's get it. Let's go. And I probably won't be looking at the chat too, too much. I'm going to try while going through it, but I'll make sure to try to answer as many questions as I possibly can. So basically with this harmonic scanner training today, um, I'm giving you those basics. So make sure you have your pen and your paper um, readily available to take some notes. We'll ask some questions, um, answer some questions and all that good stuff. So the first thing is your harmonic scanner setup. So there are gonna be some indicators I'm about to show you all here shortly. Um, but the main things that you're looking for, so take a screenshot of this, take some notes, all that good stuff. There are a couple of things you're looking for. You're looking for the D and the entry line connection. Like the perfect setups, honestly, to me, are when that D and that entry touch or the D crosses through the entry. Like not the D getting close, but not touching. Now, honestly, I do enter some trades like that, but it's some indicators that I use that I'm actually going to be showing you that help me make a conscious decision. So you're looking for the D and the entry line to connect. You're looking for a candle to touch the D. So in, in essence, the D, the candle, and the entry line are all touching at some point, okay? And then you're waiting for the candle after the D to move, the candle after the D to move in a strong direction of the trade. So you're not entering the trade once the candle touches the D, you're waiting for the next candle to form. And it may be the next candle, it may be the next, next candle. So we'll kind of talk about that and look at some examples. So I took this screenshot this morning. I just went on the scanner so I could kind of pull something up to kind of show you what I just explained. So if you look at this orange box here, what do you see? You see the D crossed over the entry. As I said, you want them to touch, connect, okay? So they connect it. But then you also see this candle touched the D. So even though there's a wick here, a wick means the price got to that point. So the wicks count when you're looking to see if the D actually touched, um, if the candle touched the D. So wicks count. It doesn't mean touch and it's a solid candle on it, just a touch. So, it, so for me, when I am scanning the market, this, is, this orange box is the first thing I'm looking for. Okay, so I'm looking for that D and that entry, and I'm looking for the candle to touch the D slash entry, if you will. So once I see that, that puts this particular pair on my radar to watch for a potential entry. Okay, so what do you what you do next is wait for the next candle to form. Now, when that next candle forms, you don't enter that trade immediately. You want to wait to see if the candle goes in the direction. Um, you want to see if the candle goes in the direction of the trade. So remember, when you're looking at the D, if the take profits, sorry, hold on. Okay, there we go. If the take profits go above the entry, you're looking to buy. So you're going to be looking for a blue candle. If the trades go below, you are looking for a sale and you're looking for a red candle. So I'm going to actually pull up the real scanner so that we can, you know, kind of look at those. So honestly, you guys, when I'm entering a trade, that's all I'm looking for. I'm looking for that D entry, the candle touching it, and then that confirmation candle. And that's the main premise of what I use to determine if I enter a trade. So even with this example here, once this candle turned a pretty solid blue, if I was watching it, more than likely I would have entered that trade right about here. Okay, so I didn't even get in at the entry because I wanted confirmation first. So I probably would have gotten this trade right about here. And then as you can see, this trade went straight up to take profit. And then by the second candle, it hit take profit too. Now, this is a 15 minute, let me confirm it up. Okay, yeah, this is a 15 minute chart. So each of these candles represent a 15 minutes. So literally in like 30 minutes, you could have got from an entry to take profit two. And then all these candles about here, it hit take profit three. So that was probably, let me see. From this entry, if you got to take profit three, that was one, two, 
three, roughly four hours before you got to take profit three. So that's literally what I look at where that's concerned. Now, what I am getting ready to show you next when I pull it up, these are other indicators that you can use. And I use these indicators on the scanner. So anytime I pull up a trade, I add these indicators. Um, unfortunately, I don't know how currently to make it just automatically pop up when I navigate between different trades. So I have to, I literally add it every single time that I go to a new trade. So I use the Bollinger Bands and these indicators you can do some additional research on. I'm not going to go too in detail what these indicators do, how they operate, but I will tell you the premise of the indicators. So basically with the Bollinger Bands, they act as big rubber bands. And if you look at Bollinger Bands, you notice that the price generally stays within the Bollinger Bands. Um, if a Bollinger, if a, the price goes outside of the Bollinger Band, it's definitely potential. Excuse me, somebody's writing on my screen. Hold on. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so um, with the Bollinger Bands, and I'll show you this on the chart, the price generally stays between those bands. So it's three different lines that represent the Bollinger Bands, so they all act as forms of support and resistance. So when I'm using the scanner and I'm getting setups, I'm also seeing where the price is in conjunction to those Bollinger Bands. That helps me determine if I'm going to pick take profit one, two, or three. So we're kind of going to go over that. Now, RSI and stochastics, these um, two indicators help you see whether a market is overbought or oversold. So if it's overbought, that basically means it's almost opportunity for sale. If it's oversold, it's almost opportunity for a buy. So that's pretty much those indicators. So let me go to the actual harmonic scanner. Okay, here we go. All right. So this is actually a um, the scanner in real life. And so what I did was, um, this was a trade I was looking at. Um, with this particular trade, you can see that the D crossed over the entry. You can also see um, the, the candle touched the D. So you're waiting on this candle. Now this candle has pretty much just been um, red. So I wouldn't technically enter this trade yet. But one of the things that I look for, if you look at the RSI and you look at the stochastics, um, it's, it's kind of in the middle. Make note of this. On the RSI, if the price, this gets below 30, it's a strong indicator that it's about to go up. If it gets above 70, it's a strong indicator that it's about to go down. So looking at this, I'm just like, I'm not going to enter this trade yet. Don't make it too hard, you guys, with this part. Now, if these indicators are too much, honestly, focus just solely on the D, the candle, and all that good stuff. Okay. But these just kind of help you see what the market is doing currently. And then even with stochastics, it's the same concept. If it's under 20, it's in a position of being oversold so it's a potential for up moving up if it's over the uh, 80 it's overbought so it's a potential for a sale so for me i'm just going to still continue to watch this because it's in the middle now as far as the bollinger bands are concerned you can see that the price point here is um inside the bollinger band but you can see here the Bollinger Band is really short here. So to me, this tells me that the price has potential to get about here. I doubt it's going to go at this point to take profit two and three. Now, as time goes on, if this Bollinger Band expands, it can grow. But for me, if I was to enter this trade, I would do take profit one based off of what I saw with this Bollinger Band. But at the same time, I would wait until I got some confirmation that the price was going up using the RSI and using the stochastics. Some people don't use RSI and stochastics. And remember, this is just what I do. Um, I've seen a lot of success from it. I've seen some people with a lot of success from it. Um, so I wouldn't, you know, pick and choose and alter accordingly. So as I stated, like, like I said, I'm still watching this particular trade. 
So you see another red candle here. So for me, I still would not have entered this trade yet. I would still keep watching it, but I'm not at a point of being comfortable with entering it. But let me go ahead and pick another pair so we can kind of see if we can find something. And I know it's the 4th of July, so I don't really trade on the holiday. So I'm not going to enter any trades, but if you see something and I, you know, you feel like you want to enter it, it's totally up to you to enter it. Now on the left side of the scanner, you see different um, brokers. I definitely recommend trading your broker, but they're kind of similar. The thing about the reason you have different brokers is because brokers have different spreads, brokers have different um, prices. Um, the prices are close, but they could be off by a couple of pipettes or something like that. So me and Sean get into the same trade, but we got two different brokers and Sean hits profit before me because of factors such as what his entry point was, what his spread is with his broker, you know, and different things like that. So I trade with JFX. So majority of the time I use JFX for um, my trades. So um, here, oh, it actually stays. Maybe something happened while I was on here. So let me zoom in here a little bit. Here's an example so we could just kind of look at it. So this is one of those examples I said that it's kind of, it didn't touch the D, but when I saw this candle touch the D and I, I recognized my Bollinger Band, that was one confirmation for me that I would potentially enter this trade. But then I waited, I would have waited for this second candle to form, start forming before I enter the sale. And then at that point, just rise. So you can see literally within about an hour, it did go from up here to your take profit one. Looking at the Bollinger Band, it may or may not hit take profit two. Um, so that's kind of what I look at, but I want to see if I can find one that we can all mutually look at. Let me minimize my screen a little bit so I can see your chat questions. Let's see. Okay, I see Sean putting pointers out there. Thank you so much. All right, perfect. All right, so here we go. So let's just look at uh, GBP and let me expand this a little bit so I can at least still see. Here we go. Okay, so let me zoom in on this one. That's pretty big, but we'll, okay. So with, with sharks and stuff like that, they have two entries. Those can be really, really tricky. Um, I'm not a big fan of those yet, but like, let's just say for instance, and I'm gonna try to find another shark example. Um, yeah, I only do the 15 minute trade, 15 minute. Um, cause I like to get in and out. Um, and sometimes you don't even get in and out on the 10 or 15. And so remember with this strategy, with this particular strategy that I'm talking about, I definitely don't recommend the hour or the four hour because when this candle touches the D, you got to wait four hours before you come back to look for the next candle. Or you have to wait an hour. Your mind may not be focused on it in an hour or four hours. You may, you know, be done, went somewhere else doing something else. So the, this strategy works best with the 15 minute because your attention is actually there for that shorter amount of time. Okay, so with this particular trade, um, the D touch here, but you wouldn't have entered because it, it turned blue. But with sharks and things like that, if you get in at this entry, it may go to take profit one, but nine times out of 10, it's going to go retrace back up to the second entry before it continues to go down. So you have to be mindful of that swing that's going to happen there when you're entering, you know, um lot sizes and stuff like that so i don't i personally don't really trade sharks like that um just because of that i like the ones with clear cut one entry and that's it so let's see okay here's another good example let me see yep so what you see on the chart right now is real time this is real time happening currently so here's another good example so um I wouldn't have done this trade, but some people would. So you see your D, your candle, your D crossed the second entry, actually. The candle touched the D, 
you waited for your next candle confirmation. So imagine if you would have just entered a sale immediately versus waiting for a solid confirmation. You see how tight that stop loss is? And that week, it would have hit your stop loss and stopped you out. Whereas waiting for more solid confirmation of a downtrend, it may have been at the latter part of this candle, you enter your sale and it took you straight to take profit three within an hour. So that's another thing. Now, I, I will also say this. Based off of support and resistance is how these take profits and stop losses come about. You as the trader have the ability and the flexibility to adjust your stop losses and take profits and even your entry points. That's how we're able to just pick our entry based on these confirmations. But you're able to choose your own take profit stop loss. Um, some people use this still for the 10 pips and dip. They may say, okay, I'm going to use this strategy to get into the trade. But instead of picking this take profit here, which will yield me six pips, I might calculate to get 10 pips. So you have flexibility. The scanner is just recommendations um, based off of market moving and how things happen. So I just wanted to make sure that you guys are clear on that. Um, I got my chat up so I can see questions. So if you have questions as we're going over this, um, definitely post your questions. So I'm just kind of, and also with the scanner, the ones at the top are the more recent ones. Um, the ones at the bottom are probably ones that have already had movement. So just to kind of show you this, I'm just kind of going through to show you some examples. Um, yes, you'll just are, you'll, add your 10 pips to the large numbers on your entry point. Absolutely. Add or subtract pips, depending on if it's um, a buy or sell. So here's another example. And I'm just kind of going through. Um, so like some people will just wait for the candle to touch the entry and enter, which is 100% fine. But as you can see with this example, you enter here, but you got to ride this retrace before it actually went up. So just kind of be mindful of that um, on your entry. Um, someone asked me which stop loss has shown me the best results. If you want an honest answer, I don't use stop losses, but that's just me. I don't recommend you don't, um, but I can say honestly, I've never really seen, unless the trade was just a, like news or something affected the trade, I've never seen any other scanner trades go more than like negative 20 or 25 pips. Um, so, all right, so here we go. So you can see that drawdown there, but if you wait for that candle to touch the D, even though it's crossed the entry, wait for that confirmation here and then enter. So in this particular trade, it took you straight to take profit one but then there was a retrace there. But remember that Bollinger Band even showed you that it would get to this point. So that's another thing to be looking at. So I definitely use the Bollinger Band to help me determine, as I stated before, which take profit I'm going to push for. Um, no, the second candle does not determine whether it's a buy or a sell. So let me kind of break this down. Okay, so you see this entry here. Okay. So you see this entry here, you see your take profit one, take profit two, and take profit three. So because your take profit one, two, and three are above the entry, that is an indication that this trade is a buy. Because as you move towards the take profit one, the price is going up. So you're buying. Take profit two, the price is going up. So the candle after the D, if this, you look here to see if it's a buy or sell first. So the candle after the D, that lets you know that you're looking for a blue candle because blue represents buy. It represents bullish. So that's what you're actually looking for on the harmonic scanner of blue. Now, on the flip side, and I'll see if I can find a sale representation, um, if the take profits are going down below the entry, that means that it is a sale, and that means that you're looking for the second candle to actually be red for a um, bullish market, I mean, a, a bearish market, my apologies. So like, for example, here, this is actually a good one. What time is it? I was trying to see if that was a candle that just came. So this is actually a good example. Um, it's a shark, so I probably wouldn't have traded this, but we talked about this a few minutes ago. 
So the D hit, the candle hit the D, the D crossed the entry, waited for this candle to form. So this candle, I would technically enter a sale currently because this candle was, you know, stayed blue majority of the time, I wouldn't have entered. But now this is a solid red candle, which for me is an indication of a sale from based off of the Bollinger Bands. Um, I know it will at least get to take profit one. It may not go to take profit two, okay? But then I look at my RSI and my stochastics, they're both pointing down, which is a sign of going down. So this would be an indicator for me to actually enter the trade. All right, let's see. Reading your questions, guys. Um, someone asked if I've used scans off the downloaded version of the scanner or only this one. So I actually have the downloaded version as well. Um, and the only reason I use the downloaded version is to get alerts when I'm not on the web scanner. So once you download the scanner, if you have a computer that you can keep up like all the time, you can set up like email alerts um, to go to your email. But then through your email, you actually set up forwarding. So I get text messages via email whenever the, the, the downloaded scanner sends me stuff. So when I get that in that that notification, I just come on the web scanner to look up the trade. Um, so you can see that in your back office. If you go in your back office under Harmonic Scanner, if you're interested in downloading that, it gives you instructions and all of that. And then I just YouTube the video on how to set up alerts um, for that. Um, let's see. Now you can do pending orders on the scanner. Just go to your MetaTrader 4 and do a buy stop or sell stop based off of where the market is and where it's asked for price, you put your entry. Where it asks for your take profit, you put that. And where it asks for your stop loss, you put that. So it wouldn't follow any type of strategy. You're just actually entering what you see in the market. All right, let's see. Enter that trade early, just hit take P. Oh, I TV. TV. Excellent job, Tammy. Yeah, I don't like sharks. <laughs> um, the red line in the Bollinger Band, does that line affect the trade? So the red line in the Bollinger Band is also a representation of support and resistance. So those two blue lines plus that red line, those all act as support and resistance. So even when you're looking at the Bollinger Band here, if you notice, even though when it's moving from top to bottom, sometimes like here, it'll come down to this red line and bounce back up. You see it's been playing on the red line too. So all of them act as forms of support and resistance. So it's like three support and resistance um, zones. Um, if you would like to add the Bollinger Bands, you would um, hit this right here and then you click on that and just scroll down and click on Bollinger Bands. And then you'll be able to add it. All right, let's see. The downloaded scanner is in your back office under Harmonic Scanner. Oh, still trying to download on Mac. It's a pain. <laughs> yeah, Tony, I actually got my, my Harmonic Scanner downloaded on the PC because it was a headache. So I just got me a little, a little uh, $100 laptop specifically to download that scanner on because that Mac was on my nerves. <laughs> so I don't have the, I do have um if you do want to trade on your computer and you have a Mac, you can um, go to FX Choice. FX Choice already has a, um, a download specific for Mac, so you don't have to go through all those extra steps of downloading. So I, I use JFX, but I downloaded FX Choice's MetaTrader 4 and then just connect to my accounts. You can't connect Trader's Way, but you can connect the other one. Um, yeah, I don't trade sharks because of the two entries. Um, sometimes it'll get to entry one and then it could be going down in the profit, but then it'll swing back and go all the way up to the second entry before it goes down. So you can, it's hard to kind of tell what a shark is going to do. They're a lot more riskier because of the movement. So I just prefer to stay away from them, but I have people who actually love those trades. 
Uh, and then Mercedes said, Mac is an issue, but you can issue a support ticket via your Mac office and they will set up an appointment to help you. Um, why does no one talk about FinPro? Um, I don't even know what FinPro is. So I'm pretty sure most people don't either. Um, so basically the difference between a buy stop and buy limit is basically where the price is right now in conjunction to where you want to enter a trade. If you are looking to enter a buy stop, that means that the price that you want to enter is higher than where you are now. If you want to enter a buy limit, that means the price is lower than where you want to enter now. Um, and if you go on to Google, I did this. Um, if you go on to Google, you could just type in buy stop um, Forex pending orders. And when you type on uh, Forex pending orders, there's a chart that actually comes up. Let me see if I can, I can show you. Here. So if you go here, you can see buy stops, buy limit, sell stop, sell limit. I like keep a copy of this um, so that you can, you know, determine how to do that. Your stop limit or buy limit, your buy limit, sell stop, all of that is uh, um, off the harmonic scanner. Whatever the price is there, that's what you actually enter. So on this particular trade, let's just say you wanted to enter a sale stop and the market's here, your sale stop price will be this entry because it's lower than where you are. Um, yep, 14 is the preference for the RSI. Um, I don't really trade the cloud with this. I'm sorry, a lot of questions coming through, so I made this song. Um, Let's see. Um, yeah, I don't really reference the cloud. I don't try to get overloaded with too many indicators. Now, some people may use the cloud in conjunction, but you know, kind of figure out and work works out with you. As far as like, what's a shark? What's a bat? What's a deep crab? Make sure that y'all log into the IML back office and um, go to the section that talks about harmonics. It gives you more information on those pairs. I'm not going to really get into all of the different harmonic patterns and stuff on here. Um, let's see. We kind of go over some other questions. Let's see what else we got out here. It's not really a way to automate um, this part. Not through IML for the scanner at all. It's no type of automation set up. Um, Let's see. Da, 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 da. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Tony. I appreciate it. Um, let's see. How long does a 15-minute chart take? Because it seemed like it'd be in for a while. I keep hearing people say in and out. It honestly varies depending on what's happening in the market. Um, one of the examples I showed you, it went straight to take profit two in like less than 30 minutes. But then there was one, it took like four hours. So it just depends on market movement. It's not a definite on how long it should take. 15 minute uh, chart trades technically tend to be shorter than your one hour and your four hour. If there's news or anything happening that caused the market to move faster, it can definitely happen faster. Um, let's see. So once you have your confirmations, it's best likely to take the TP, which is in the Bollinger Band and the rest. Exactly. So whenever I determine my confirmations and I enter that buy or that sell, the take profit I pick is dependent upon the Bollinger Bands. I pick the take profit that is inside the Bollinger Bands because more than likely it's gonna, the price is going to get down to that Bollinger Band before it bounces back up. So I know that it will cross and hit my take profit. All right, let's see. Da, 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 da. How do I add a pair to the web scanner? Oh, so you don't add pairs to the web scanner. So what happens, the scanner scans the market for those major pairs. And if there is a setup based off of the harmonic patterns, it will automatically pop up. But you're not able to like just go in and add trades. I mean, add pairs and stuff. 
Um, let's see. Okay, yep. Yeah. So if you look here at the top, I'm answering the question from Stephanie Allen. Okay, so if you go here to the top left, it's the uh, one next to the pinwheel that has like the charts. If you click on that and just scroll down the Bollinger Band, it actually pulls up all the indicators um, that you would like to enter. Um, yes, it is definitely re recorded. Um, I'll get that posted out to you. Um, yeah, if you pull up a chart and it has several candles past the entry, um, as far as if it's too late to enter, it's definitely going to be a personal decision. Um, for a brand new person, I personally wouldn't recommend it um, just until you get a little bit more savvy. But if you've been trading for a while, you may want to look at um, you may want to look at where the price is in conjunction to the Bollinger Band. Like if I had just pulled this trade up and it wasn't a sharp, and it was right here above the entry, and I see it's going down, I see the Bollinger Band. Me personally, I would enter this trade. But like if it's already broke entry, it's already hit a take profit, like all of that. I just will wait for another setup. Um, now, I know somebody earlier asked about the one hour, four hour, all of that. Now, those um, actually do as well work. They're just longer, so it just depends on your level of patience um, with it. Um, let me see. Let me try to pull up a one hour so I can see if it's an example. So, like with this one, it's kind of a iffy situation. I probably would have entered this trade, um, even though it's in a strong, um, even though it's in a strong, well, it's not in a retrace, but as you can see, it came, the price came out of the Bollinger Band, which is a strong indicator for me that the price is going to drop. So when this candle formed red, I would have entered the sale. So it broke take profit one. It got close to take profit two and close to this middle Bollinger Band, which it could have broken or it could have bounced back up. So as you can see, it got close but went back up. So now it's back up riding the top of this Bollinger Band. Now this is going to drop. I can't say when, but it's back close to the entry. It's going to drop. The Bollinger Band is wide and it's spanning all the way to take profit three. So I have a potential to make profit all the way to take profit three. Now, these are moving sideways. It's a consolidation. Even here is sideways. So it's signs of consolidation. So, you know, so those are just kind of things that you can look at to help you make um, decisions on this trade. But if I had saw this trade and I was trading the hour chart, I would currently be in this trade. Um, the Bollinger Band is at 20 and 2. Okay, let's see. Do you have any other questions for me? Um, I'm not going to hold you guys much longer. I think I pretty much gave you the basics unless it's something you guys aren't clear on. Let's see. And I'm just hoping something might pop up while we on here but it doesn't look like it is everything's still kind of the same let me see yeah um yeah it's very very simple very very simple Um, honestly, any laptop, I definitely recommend a PC just to not have to go through the headache of it because the scanner can only be, um, well, it can be downloaded multiple ways, even for a Mac. It's just too many extras. So I would recommend if you have a PC that you're willing to buy to get that. Let's see. Somebody said if I could only undo the G you miss. Um, as far as the Bollinger Bands, you look at the outer Bollinger Bands. Yes, I look at the outer Bollinger Bands. Absolutely. Thanks, Kevin. Happy fourth to you as well. Let me see what other questions we have out here. 
how do you determine to stop a trade? It's up to you. Um, if you're in profit and you're cool with your profit, then you can just close the trade. If you are in a loss on that particular trade and it's more than you can handle, then close the trade in the loss. It's better to take a L than to um, keep it in and it still continues to go against you and blow your account. Now, I definitely recommend using excellent risk to reward, making sure you have proper lot sizes in conjunction with the number of pips so you know ahead of time. So if you haven't already, make sure you go to my YouTube channel. I have a video out there talking about risk to reward so that you can use that to determine what your lot size should be in conjunction to the number of pips you're risking so that you, you know where you are when you're actually entering a trade. Um, the chart pretty much focuses on major pairs. Um, I do see some exotic pairs here and there, but it's um, majority major pairs. Um, let's see, reading the questions. Da, da, da. The, the recording will be on my YouTube channel, but it'll also be posted in the app. Um, let me see. I, I thought I answered this question. The stop limit it's not about it's not stop limit or are you talking about stop loss and if you're asking about your stop loss you determine your stop loss based on how much you're willing to risk in a number of pips based off of your lot size so um i would recommend going back to my video if you're unsure of how to do that um that's a whole nother teaching in itself um i did a video probably like two weeks ago so if you just go to camille westmoreland on youtube it'll pop up um, it's a Forex 101 um, that was done in June. So look for that and watch that, and that can definitely answer, it, answer that question. All right, let's see. Yep, for the Mac FX choice, it is. So basically, the Bollinger Bands are like rubber bands. The price stays in between the, generally stays in between the Bollinger Bands. So it'll get down to one, bounce up, to another bounce, like drop down, you know, it stays in between the two. So the Bollinger Band is definitely a great indicator of where price is and if it's indication of if it's gonna go up or not. Um, somebody said, when's the next training? I don't know. <laughs> um, I'll actually be traveling to, I'll be in Atlanta next week, but I am taking um, youth ministry from my church to a conference at World Changers. And then the week after that, we'll be in Detroit. So I'll be doing some training in Detroit. So if you're there, that'll be good. Um, let's see. Divergence. I do consider it, but I still haven't mastered it enough to really know what I'm looking at. I honestly just started learning about divergence. Um, so don't know much about that. Um, as far as how much your broker charges per trade, you probably need to connect with them, but I know your spread as well as your lot size plays a role in what that amount is. Um, so if it hits your D point and goes above your entry point and the next candle changes color, should you get in? If the next candle changes and it goes solid for a, a short period, a strong period of time in the direction that you want it to go. So if you're looking to buy you want to see a solid blue candle. If you're looking to sell, you want to see a solid red candle. Yeah, your stop loss is listed here, but if you don't want to use that stop loss and make your own, you would calculate the number of pips you want to risk based off of your lot size. So if you only want to risk $10 um, and you have a 0 0.10 lot, then your stop loss needs to be uh, 10 pips. So that's pretty much how it works. All right, let's see. Alerts are sent when you have that scanner set up. Um, when you have the scanner set up and you get the text alerts on your phone, they send whenever there are setups available. Um, yeah, most people in the beginning stay at take profit one and then, you know, you gradually evolve from there. Um, as far as a place to go to determine the best brokers, honestly, I don't know. I like JFX because I am studying crypto 
And right now, that's the only broker I know of that allows you to trade cryptocurrency. And they also allow you to, um, they also, I'm sorry if y'all hear my puppy whining in the background. I try to keep him asleep until this is over. <laughs> but, um, oh, a Daisy Duncan has training on choosing a broker. So you can read um, that. Yeah, people could trade tomorrow morning. Honestly, I trade the scanner mostly during the London session. A lot of movement happens in a London session and New York session are great sessions and opportunities to trade the harmonic scanner. Um, let me see. Okay. All right. So any other questions before we get ready to wrap the call? I am going to try my best to get this um, out today. If not today, by tomorrow for sure. So does anybody have any questions? Last questions. Okay, they say look at AUDCAD. Let's look at it real quick. Yeah, AUDCAD been real. It's playing along the Bollinger Band. Um, I still believe it, it'll get up to take profit one. Um, Right now, this Bollinger Band at the bottom is kind of pointing down, which tells me it can retrace a little bit more before it goes up. Um, but then down here with the stochastic, it um, is getting to a point, and you focus on the blue line. The red line is pretty much like the moving average, if you will. But the blue line kind of determines, you know, overbought or oversold and so forth. Um, so it's getting to a point of being overbought which is, I mean, oversold, which is an indication of moving into a bullish pattern. Um, let's see. Hey, Marty. Um, J-A-F-X. All right. Um, my YouTube channel is just my name, um, Camille Westmoreland, and I'll type it in here really quick. Okay. So there. Awesome. Hey, Sharita. Thank you. Okay. So, so yeah, so that one, and you can see it just went down a little bit more. So I would say keep watching that one. Um, I would have probably been in this trade at this candle. Um, so yeah. So let's see. All right, you guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap. Um, my experience has been great. I love JFX. I, actually, I absolutely love them. But yeah, we're going to get ready to wrap. I will make sure that I get this replay out to you guys. Make sure that you're on the leadership call tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. Enjoy the fourth. Make sure you prospect and pull out your phone and do some trades around your family while y'all by the pool and all that good stuff. And let's make it a great day. Enjoy the rest of your holiday. And I will see you guys on the call tomorrow. God bless.